Hello, and thanks for watching this sh short video uh, focusing on QuickBooks 2014, uh, Pro, Premier, and Enterprise solutions, some transactional improvements or enhancements that are new uh, that you or your clients or customers could really take advantage of to make things just more efficient or it just might kind of makes more sense, if you will. First off, um, the reporting ribbon on transactions. When you click reports, we've added, you know, we just had the quick report, transaction history, and transaction journal in 2013, you know, and there, these reports were always there. They were just a different way to get to them uh, prior to 2013, you know, before the big user interface change. Pretty much from 2006, 2012, QuickBooks looked the same, right? And then that was the last user interface change was 06, and then it was 13. In 14, we added by transaction type key reports you think you'll want to go to as well. So we added some reports to the reporting ribbon that should be specific to the transaction you're on. That's a better way to say it. Also, which is really cool, is I can copy lines from one line to another uh, on a transaction. And you'll find that there, as well as I could do it under the um, main. And there's an ability to um, actually, sorry, copy copy line, paste line. So we've added those uh, features to transactions as well. And that might be helpful uh, for some of you. Now let's take a look at the payroll center because that's changed uh, quite a bit as well. I'm going to close all the, uh, in, all the windows here and I'm going to go to employees and then payroll center. So all the tools and features are the same and the user interface for the most part are the same. But instead of having three sections top to bottom, we've basically created tabs, right? With quick guides and other activities and reports uh, and also services you can attach and connect down below. So let me open up the payroll center a little bigger. So here would be my paychecks and the workflow is going to be the same. So like three steps and here's my recent payrolls, but that's nice to see. I don't remember seeing that on, on the payroll center. Um, and then of course my liabilities as well. And I can see my e-payments as well as all my payment history on one window. So that's a big change. Then finally, filing forms, I'll have my federal and the state forms, depending on what my employees, what state they're working in. Uh, and I can go ahead and see the uh, saved filings and, and look at what's been e-filed as well as quick guides, like I said, and other activities there. And each has kind of a, you know, the forms uh, tab there. Uh, and so here's where you can view pay and then of course pay employees. So a lot easier. Plus what, what I really like or what I, what I take away from this is I can access um, my previous payrolls without having to go to employees, you know, edit void paychecks. So I kind of like that or running a report. So that's new with the actual uh, payroll center. So let's close out of there. Another key transaction um, enhancement, really. Let's go to the vendor center for a second. Now, you guys know the story. Uh, when you have a bill which was paid fully with a credit, if it's partial, you can go ahead and print the bill payment stub, and you'll see the partial credit amount applied to that bill along with the bill payment. However, when you take a credit and fully apply it to a bill, and you try to go print out the bill payment stub, it's just the bill right it's just gone and you have what you have to do is do a history you know and screen sh uh, shoot this and then send it to your vendor right to prove your case no i had a credit I'm telling you i had one you gave one to me so what i like about this now is with 2014 pro premier and enterprise i go to file print forms and i'm going to choose bill payment stub and let's preview this and there it is see the bill and the credit when the credit was applied fully to pay off the bill so that's a an improvement really that's an enhancement to me because it was just never working you know, correctly before, if you will. And then finally, a, a true feature enhancement. Let's go to the customer center this time. And I'm going to go ahead and use Mike Balak here. And he has, or Balak, he has a payment. And you know the bounce check story. There's quite a few steps in the help center. But here's a way you can do it just right from the customer payment window, you go ahead and click record bounce check. And I can even classify it. I'm going to put in the bank fee that I was charged for, say $45 and the date. Here's the expense account for the service charges. I'm going to go ahead and charge invoice a customer what I charge them when they bounce a check against payment for me, right? Against my invoice. And instead of having to follow all those steps and help, and it's quite, it's really involved creating these other charge items and linking to these accounts, et cetera. And just, you have to remember what to, to, 
delete the payment from the invoice and then create another invoice and make sure you take it out of the register, right? All that stuff that you guys have to do. And now you actually have a, a bounce check module or feature right from the customer payment window. So I fill out that information, I click next, and it tells me what it's going to do. So the following invoice 1022 is unpaid now, right? So that debit AR will be there still. These following fees will be deducted from my bank account. From checking, the payment will be deducted, and of course, the service fee for $45. Uh, dollars. That'll be credited from my bank account. And then finally, the invoice will be created for the fee I want to uh, you know, send along to my customer. right? And that invoice is still open, so it takes care of all that with really two clicks once you fill out the fields. And then it leaves behind a bounce check flag on the actual customer payment, so you know that it's there. So pretty cool uh, as far as that goes. And I wanted to also mention in the customer center, we added a sent mail, sent email tab. So when you send emails to your clients, you'll be able to see them there. there was, we always get this request. And there's no way really to track it unless you send it through Outlook, right? The QuickBooks doesn't really keep it, so now it will. And if I actually go back to the uh, employee center, there's also a sent email um, for employees as well when you send them their pay stubs. So a couple new other features to mention. And finally, the last thing to cover would be, you know, the, the income list in QuickBooks Online, very popular, right? Uh, so what we've done is, is we have an income tracker now in QuickBooks Pro Premier and Enterprise Solution. And it's the same theory, same approach. You have a money bar up top going from estimates to sales orders, open invoices, what's overdue, and what's been paid. And the actual columns, like a spreadsheet, very familiar, very easy to work on and visually uh, easy for the workflow and easy on the eyes. And it tells the user and yourself the next logical action, right? So let's start with, you know, this particular, uh, let's go to an estimate here. We'll, we'll start with Babcock's Music Shop. I'm going to go from the estimate. I'm just going to go through the thing. Typically, you guys will skip the sales order, go right to the invoice. But just so you can see it, move from side to side. This estimate or 615. I'm going to convert it to a sales order. It's going to go ahead and tell me that. And there's the sales order, right? I'm going to save and close it. And then I'm going to go to sales orders. Now I have the sales order. I'm going to go ahead and convert it to an invoice. That would be the next logical step. Of course, you can filter these by job, type, right? status, date, etc. If I clear show all, it's going to bring me back to the beginning where I can see all. So now I can filter by all of this. It's probably a better way to show it to you. Different statuses, okay? And of course, date and of course, you know, your customer job list. Let's go back to sales orders. Click on Bob's music shop and go ahead and convert that to an invoice. I'm going to do it for all the items. You can do it for selected, just like you would, like progress invoicing, if you will. Go ahead and save that. And now we'll go to open invoices. If it's not, I have none overdue, so red is good because that's the things you need attention, but I have nothing overdue. And then I can actually um, look for Babcock's music shop, the invoice here, the next logical step over in the action column is going to be receive a payment. It's going to bring in the receive payment window with the invoice already checked off. I click uh, save and close. And then there's nothing overdue. And then this shows me what, you know, has been paid in the last 30 days. So that's nice flow for your clients as well as for uh, yourself and just in just training, you know, instead of using the home page, which has arrows, but sometimes it's, it's easy to forget what the next step or next action that's logical in the process, you know, starting from that first event, which might have been the sales order estimate or invoice. I'd love to see this on vendors as well. Uh, in the new QuickBooks Online, you'll see similar money bar and action plan or timeline uh, for vendors as well as customers. But for Pro Premier and Enterprise 2013 and the Mac, I'm going to say for QuickBooks Mac has a similar income tracker. Hope that was helpful. Have a great day.